All right, does anyone know what this thing is? Or ideas, differentials? Something about angiomyoma? That is an excellent thought. And it does look quite pink. And then in other areas, though, it looks a little different. So like right here, it really looks like smooth muscle and vessels inside, right? So angiolimyoma. But then over here, we get a little bit different uh, pattern. So any thoughts on what you do with this area? If I just had the previous area I showed you, I think that's exactly what I'd call it. I have a slightly different view with this, but there's there's a lot of morphologic overlap. See how it looks kind of whirled? You guys see that? There's a, you know, whirling is something you got to hallucinate a little bit, but there's a whirl, a whirl, a whirl, a whirl. Whirled and swirled, plump, pink, spindle cells. Sometimes they're a little more bluish than this. Sometimes they look more pink, depends on the case. But if you have something that looks vaguely like uh, angiolimyoma but has whirling, kind of swirling pattern, the other thing you should think of is a myopericytoma. So I always kind of conceptually thought of myopericytoma as, as like a spindly form of glomus, but actually that's not, with more recent studies, that's not what it ends up being. They're actually thought currently to be on a spectrum with myofibromas, even though to my eye they don't really look much like a myofibroma. They look really like an angiolimyoma. And so this one is an interesting one because it has areas like this that look quite nice for myopericytoma, but then areas over here that look more like angiolimyoma. And I have seen this occasionally before where you have this kind of overlapping tumor. And you know, the thing is, is they're benign. And so it doesn't matter really if you call it angiolimyoma or myopericytoma, or you say it's a spindle cell tumor with features of both in, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter because they're both benign and simple excision should usually be curative. So um, not a big deal. And what's interesting both about myopericytomas and angiolimyomas is they often arise um, in association with a large blood vessel. I've seen this multiple times where you get the tumor either arising on the side of a vessel or particularly with myopericytomas inside the vessel. See this? This is a vessel wall out here. That's smooth muscle of the vessel wall. And then here we've got the tumor arising in the midst of it. And see how these are kind of spindle cells bulge into the vessel? That is actually something you see in myofibromas. So that kind of uh, would actually fit with this idea that myopericytomas are kind of linked. But anyway, I guess usually if I see overlapping features between angiolimyoma and myopericytoma, I tend to call it myopericytoma. Um, but, uh, but again, you could probably find different people who have different views on that. But either, in either case, they're both pretty kind of cool tumors. But when you get this swirling, whirling pattern, that's what I'd think of. You could also think of a perineurioma here. But since we're inside a vessel and we've got these myoid looking areas and all these big vascular channels, I think myopericytoma is a, a better name for that.